This is something I get asked about all the time, particularly with new boaters. It can be a super stressful part of the boating process. And once you've done it 10 or 20 times, then it's easy and it's not a big deal. But when you're first starting out, it can be one of the scariest and most stressful parts of boating. So I want to take you through my process from the top of the launch ramp, getting the boat ready up here, all the way down into the water. And so hopefully next time when you're out on the water, it's not going to be super stressful or scary that you have a good plan in place. And then it's just easy and then you can enjoy your day on the water. So notice that we have stopped at the top of the ramp, far away, other boats can get by us to go straight to the ramp if they're ready to go. This is where I'm gonna do most of my prep. I'm going to be running through my checklist, making sure the boat is fully ready, so by the time I get down to the launch ramp, I can be in and out very quickly and not, uh, not be in the way of other boaters for very long and just make it, make it more convenient for myself. I'm ready to go as soon as I get down to the water. So we'll do a walk around of the boat and I'll show you my checklist and then we'll drive on down. All right, so when I get out of the truck, my first stop is the very front of the boat. This is where the bow strap is tied on, where I've got my winch strap here. I, I personally don't like to fully unhook it until the boat is in the water and I know it's running and I'm okay being detached from the trailer. A lot of people undo the strap fully right here. Personally, I keep it attached. I don't want that boat going anywhere until I'm ready for it to go somewhere. Some boats have a safety strap here so you can undo the main winch strap and then just keep the safety strap there and that's just going to keep you still attached or you can undo this one and then just loosen this one up either way now notice how i loosened this up but didn't detach it so let's pretend i don't have a safety strap here just because i know a lot of boats don't have it so i'm going to do it like it doesn't have one so i loosened it up kept it attached but gave myself a little bit of slack here the reason I did that is as soon as the boat is in the water, boat and trailer, and the boat lifts up, that wind strap can get super tight and it can get really difficult to undo once I'm on the water. So I at least give myself a little bit of a little bit of slack here. So when it gets in the water, I can start the boat, then I can reach over and, un, uh, and unhook it, and then I can back away off the trailer. So that's why I've done it this way. I keep it attached just with a little bit of slack. Then I walk around to the back of the boat and I'm going to undo my transom straps and I'm gonna check for my transom plug. Typically this plug will only be out if you were the one who took it out, but since I'm down there doing transom straps anyway, I just give it a glance, make sure it's in there. Then I jump in the boat and I'm going to turn on my battery switch. Not every boat has a switch, so in that case, I would just make sure that your cables are hooked up if you just have one battery, just that your battery is connected and it's live and ready to go. I'm gonna turn the key on. Now in this boat, the blower kicks on automatically and it's gonna run for the, for the standard amount of time on its own. If not, I would turn the blower on at this point. Then by the time I've driven the boat down, the, down to the ramp and I'm ready to roll, the blower's been running for as long as it should be. Four minutes is what most manufacturers are gonna recommend. Um, so by the time I'm down there, it's been four minutes, blower's been going for long enough. This one has a transom plug and a T plug, so I'm gonna check, I already checked the transom plug, now I'm just gonna make sure that the T plug is in. Same thing, that's only gonna be out if you or your shop, your service department took it out, uh, but it's not a bad idea to just check and make sure every time. The boat is ready to go now. One last thing I like to do when I'm up at the top of the ramp is get any gear that's in the truck and I haven't already put it in the boat. I like to put all that gear in here. That way I don't have to tote it all the way down to the dock. I just load it up in the boat and then I'm ready to go. Uh, any people who aren't parking the truck, they can hop in right now too. Or if you just wanna do it by yourself, if it's a little bit stressful and you just wanna be in the boat by yourself, then you could just have them at, down at the dock and you can pick them up later. Just saves you time when you're down there. If you've got all your gear and all your people, all you have to do is come back, grab your driver and then get out of there. At this point, we're ready to back the boat down the ramp. Some ramps are tighter than others, some give you a ton of room, but what, what you really wanna do is pull as far forward as you possibly can before backing down to get the truck and the trailer as straight as possible. This is going to minimize the corrections that you have to make. So rather than having to make big drastic moves to, to get the boat down there, you can just make minor adjustments um, with, the, with the truck to keep the boat as straight as possible. So starting out as straight as possible is gonna make it way easier when you're backing the boat down. As you're backing down, you wanna be aware of where other boats and trailers are. And if you're on a ramp that's double wide or triple wide, that you're not just right down in the center of it, that other people can launch their boats next to you. So definitely be aware of what's going on around you and where you're backing your boat down. Be courteous to other boaters that you're not just taking up the whole ramp for a long period of time. As you're backing down as well, you wanna be aware that 
all V drive and direct drive, any inboard boat is going to naturally pull one direction as you reverse. You don't really have very good steering capabilities at all when you're backing it off the trailer. So you wanna be aware of what direction it's gonna pull um, based on the way the prop spins and then account for that. You can see here, we're backing down over on the far side of the ramp or we're closer to um, to the one side of the ramp because I know the boat, the boat naturally is gonna wanna pull to the right. So I'm just giving myself a little more room. Uh, if there were a lot of people here and a lot more boaters, obviously I'm just gonna launch wherever I can, but if I have a choice, I'm gonna make it as easy as possible. When you're backing the trailer down, you want to make sure that start with the fenders just barely, barely underwater, just the top of the water kissing the top of the fender. That way it's deep enough that you can start the boat, but not so deep that the boat's gonna go anywhere. And then if you have a second person in there, all they need to do after you've done your checks and unhooked the bow, all they have to do is have them back you down a little bit farther till the boat just nicely floats off. If you're on your own, you're gonna have to reverse it pretty hard um, just to get it to, to release from the trailer a little bit. Or you could hop back in the truck, back it down just a little bit farther so it, it floats up off the trailer. But I like to do my checks when the trailer, or when the trailer is just barely, barely in the water. That way, um, my boat's not gonna go anywhere until I want it to. The ideal way to launch a boat is having two people, uh, at least. So one person in the truck, one person in the boat. Once the trailer's back down far enough, person in the boat can go ahead and start it. Make sure that your blower has been running for at least four minutes before you do that. And then I like to open up the engine compartments just to make sure that I don't have water coming in anywhere, that um, all my hose clamps are tight, everything sounds good, everything looks good. Uh, it's just an extra check I like to do. Once that's all good, then I can unhook my bow strap. Or if it's warm and the driver is out there, uh, they could unhook it for you as well. Once your strap's unhooked and the boat's really ready, you can signal to the truck driver uh, to back you down just a little bit farther. And they're gonna continue to back you down until the boat just nice, gently releases off of the trailer nice and slow. That way you don't have to jam it into reverse at all. You can just drift nicely off the trailer. Once the boat's fully off the trailer, truck driver can pull out and go park the truck. This is where it's super nice to have two people. You have a truck driver and a boat driver. Somebody can go park the truck and you don't even have to tie up the boat. You don't have to pull out your bumpers or your dock lines or anything like that. You can stay out away from the dock and then when it's time, you just, when you see your driver coming back, you just nose in like we've talked about in another video and pick them up and then back out and you're out of there. You never have to be uh, in the way of other boaters or really um, just hanging around on the dock. Now that the boat is off the trailer, the goal is to keep it as straight as possible until you can get fully clear of the other boaters and the docks. The longer the boat is in reverse, the harder it's going to want to pull. The way I can minimize that is little spurts of reverse and then back into neutral. So into reverse, back into neutral, and just take advantage of the drift uh, in the direction that I want to be going without it pulling too hard one way. The other thing you can do is turn the wheel the opposite direction of the way the boat wants to pull. This will help it track straighter. You're not gonna be able to steer at all, but it will minimize how hard it's going to pull that direction. Every boat is different and every launch ramp is different. So the only way you're gonna get good at this is if you get out there and practice. Keep backing up until you're fully clear of the docks and that's it, you just launched your boat. When you're launching a boat by yourself, it can be, uh, it just is a little more time consuming because you're doing basically the job of, of two people. Uh, you back the boat down, get it into a spot that you know you can leave the trailer for a minute while you go park the boat. If you're a pretty confident backer downer and you feel good about getting it really close to, uh, close to the dock, that all you have to do is walk on the dock and you can hop right into the boat, awesome. If you're not as comfortable, then it's easier just to climb through the truck and then climb back, climb into the boat. I would try to make sure before you've backed the boat down when you're doing all your inside the boat checks and getting everything turned on and ready that you leave the windshield open just to make it easier to climb through. Do all the same checks that you're gonna do uh, when you have two people. So make sure the boat is deep enough in the water that you can start it. Open up the engine compartment, check, make sure there's no water coming in anywhere. Your plugs are definitely in. You're good to be released from the trailer. Then you can reach over the front, unhook the strap, When you're doing it by yourself, you're probably gonna be reversing a little bit harder off the trailer 
than you would if somebody was in the truck and at this point could back you down a little bit farther and just kind of give you a nudge off the trailer. So you have to put it pretty hard into reverse to get it to come off of the trailer and then you can just back off and, and out, of the, uh, out of the launch area like you normally would. If launching by yourself, one of the one of the things you can do at the top of the ramp is pull out your bumpers and your dock lines and just have them ready to go so you don't have to dig around and try to find them. I wouldn't put them on the boat until the boat is actually off the trailer in the water just because it can um, push the boat in funky directions or they can get caught on the guidepost. So have them out and ready to roll but not actually on the boat yet. And with all these steps, you don't want to rush. You want to be quick about it, but you don't want to rush. Don't go faster than you feel comfortable doing. Make sure that you don't skip steps because there's a lot of people out there and you're trying to hurry. Do everything that you need to do to launch this boat safely, but do it with other boaters in mind. You don't want to take more time than you need to with your truck just sitting there on the launch ramp. You don't want to be in the way of other people. Um, I mean, boaters are cool, and if they see that you're hurrying and you're trying, then they're not going to worry about it. But if you're just standing around, taking your time, that's where other boaters are going to start to get annoyed and it's just not very respectful of other people's time. So try to get the truck off of the ramp as quickly as you can, but do it safely and do it methodically. Now I tie the boat off and notice I'm tying the boat away from the launch ramp. I didn't tie it just right behind the truck and the trailer because even if I pull my trailer out, nobody's able to launch right there. My boat's still there. So that's why I drive the boat around to the other side of the dock. I get it fully out of the way of other trucks and trailers. And then I'm gonna hustle back to the truck um, so I can get it out of the water and go park it. And then somebody could launch right away as soon as I pull out. They don't have to wait for me to get back in the boat, move away from the dock and then and, and get out of there. Um, just another way to be courteous to other boaters. If for whatever reason you do have to keep the boat on the dock right behind the trailer, try to get it as, as far back as possible so somebody could potentially still launch right there, you wouldn't be in the way. Get it, get it as far down the dock as, as you possibly can. So that's how you launch a boat. Hopefully this helps. So next time you're out there, it's not so scary or stressful. It just can be easy and smooth and then you get to go do the fun stuff. Uh, if you have tips that you like when you're launching your boat, I'd love to hear them in the comments. If you have any questions, same thing, leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this video, hit like, subscribe to my channel to see more stuff like this, and we'll see you on the water.